Okay, so I just want to talk a little bit about uh, The Course in Miracles and, you know, it talks a lot about guilt. And uh, for me, The Course in Miracles is, um, on a simplistic level, I heard this thing and I agree with it, is the, the removal of the blocks to love. Mm -hmm. The removal of the blocks. So it's more a, a program of letting go than, you know, um, sort of uh, defining to grace, to higher power, what, you, what the ego wants. More like letting go to be uh, to be with uh, the truth of what one is. So, and the Course in Miracles talks about sin, and uh, and and I would I would talk about it as um, the ego is comprised of um, <clears throat> uh, sin. I would say I would put my own uh, definition of sin onto it. I mean, sin, or I'd like to use the umbrella term of fear. Uh, the umbrella term of fear has gradations of fear. So the gradations of fear are shame, uh, guilt, uh, uh, you know, apathy, uh, pride, anger. So those are all the different grades of different vibrations going up. And they comprise the, uh, the ego. And the ego is comprised of that plus its thought patterns, its belief systems. So dependent on how... how um, depending on how dense the ego is in an individual, then it will experience, you know, it will experience separation. You know, it experiences, you could say, I've heard this term, separation anxiety. You know, there's a feeling of separation anxiety for everyone who's identified with the ego. And dependent on how much repressed feelings and how many thoughts there are. So, someone who's really, um, has a lot of repressed feelings, and a lot, uh, they automatically go together. So when you have a lot of repressed feelings, you, you'll be feeling things like shame and guilt, even though you might not consciously be, but it's like a huge dense magnet, shall we say, uh, that's uh, in the ego. And that will be, um, and the thought patterns and the beliefs and thoughts that you pick up, um, Hawkins calls it an attractor, an attractor field. But it's like, so you can say that on a certain level, uh, separation doesn't exist. There is no such thing as individual people. There is no such thing. Now, of course, when you're highly identified with your thinking and, you're highly ident and you've got a lot of repressed feelings like shame and guilt in, and fear in the consciousness, then the experience is of individuality or separation. You know, an individual, to be an individual, you have to be separate from the universe, everything around you, to experience yourself as an individual. You know, an individual could be, another metaphor could be like, you know, the clouds in the sky. You know, I mean, is a, is a cloud a real thing? Or actually, is the sky the real, the truth? I.e., there's only one sky. And that these clouds were actually imagining for a short period of time in an, halluc an hallucinatory, illusory idea that actually the cloud was a real object in real separation and that other clouds were real. And that actually the sky doesn't exist, you know, it's like a world of separate clouds that believe that they're, that they're in truth, separate clouds relating to each other, you see. And they have this sort of collective hypnosis, like, oh, I'm a cloud and you're a cloud, and really we're in a world of separation, you know, and there isn't such a thing as a sky. So, so when, when there's a lot of repressed feeling, that level of repressed feelings... So, I, I, I mean, I'm going to describe it this way. Of course, in truth, there is no such thing as duality or causality. But So when there's a lot of repressed feelings, it's like you're tuning in to a certain um, wave band or an FM radio station where all the clouds which are in sort of radio shame and radio guilt land are picking up similar thoughts from the collective environment. So they're picking up, you know, all kinds of shame, about, shame or guilt or unworthiness type of thoughts because they feel separated, and when you feel separated and you've got a lot of repressed feelings, you know, there's some sort of, uh, Jung called it the collective unconscious. But, uh, you know, you're picking up uh, from the radio station these collective thoughts like, oh, there's this deep feeling of, may not be conscious of guilt and shame uh, and fear, and there's a f and this, uh, this strong feeling of separation. Like when I was really in active addiction, I really felt hugely identified in my body. And there was all these aches and pains and fears. And I never, I never wanted to be still because then I'd feel this self-hatred and this self-loathing, this shame. So I never was. I was in active addiction, constantly thinking at 100 miles an hour, had a career in the stock market, was binging out on food, 
all of these distraction things uh, and control mechanisms to just never feel. Uh, and so it was like a it was like a, a volcano of deeper and deeper repressed feelings, and of course, deeper and deeper unworthiness. And even when it gets really bad at the end stage, you're suicidal because you, in all your actions, you're orchestrated. You're orchestrated by it's like a, a magnetic radio station of uh, it, life is so bad and you feel so unworthy that the best option is to commit suicide. Now it's not conscious suicide, but it's like every the, the career you choose is suicidal, uh, the, the way you eat food is suicidal, the way you choose relationships is suicidal, and, uh, and there is no sense of inner peace. So it's always like you have to control and get things out, like maybe if I have some more food, or if I'm more successful, or if that girl likes me more, then, but that, that never satisfies, you know, it's a field of... Uh, and you feel unworthy and you think if you get something outside of yourself it'll, it'll fix the problem. It might fix it for a short while, but it doesn't. So that's the lowest end. So as you start to do, and, you know, in my case I, you know, I had a kidney failure and a rock bottom spiritual experience. But as soon as you start to, you know, at some point this uh, may happen in certain individuals that they have a rock bottom or a spiritual awakening of some sort. And they pursue spirituality. So I think spirituality is a bit like laxatives, you know, it's like you know, you become so constipated with, with uh, you know, that you're, you're an individual cloud and you can't get connection from food or from, from, you know, you're just so constricted and it's like a volcano of uh, repressed feelings. So you just feel very contracted and, uh, and uh, you're needing all these external things to just try and get some soothing. So you really need, and then the spirit, spirit awakens usually in some individuals with a spiritual calling or some kind of catastrophe happens, or loss of a job, or loss of health, loss of a relationship, or something, or identity crisis, or something happens. And so, you know, the, the call of the spirit, you know, it's like now it's like time to let go, you know, and, and then, um, so then, uh, you know, either usually a teacher will appear, a group will appear, or a book will appear, or whatever, it ha whatever happens. Mm -hmm something happens mm. and it's like you know that jolt of the spirit suddenly suddenly the light comes in and suddenly you know a book happens or a tv program happens or you just pop into a spiritual group and it's like now the calling is like you know this low self-esteem this self-hatred this life not feeling in connection with the soul suddenly it's like this um all these repressed feelings like shame and guilt and fear and all this very strongly identified thinking that happens, all these thoughts and belief systems, some, some pathway happens, or teaching happens, or teacher happens, to just start letting all of this stuff go. And then as you start letting stuff go, and uh, I mean the pathway that I like is uh, what, I, what I sort of share in the group, is like letting go of the repressed feelings by feeling them out, and also letting go of all your belief systems, all the thoughts that you held on, which the two things together, depending on how contracted, how many repressed feelings, you know, the more repressed feelings, the more unworthy you feel, and the more thinking. The un Why? Because repressed feelings and lots of thinking is blocking you off from the light of consciousness, is blocking you off from the source. Too much thinking is like, you know, if there's sunlight on outside and you've got blinds and you think too fast, it's like no sunlight can come in. You can't do it. Or if you've got too many repressed feelings, it's like a volcano. The sunlight, which is always there, which has always been there, you just can't experience it. So you just uh, like a little, uh, like a hamster. Yep. Isn't it one of the biggest illusions of the of the, one of the belief systems I certainly have, yes, uh, or, or used to have, is that I'm I'm unhappy with my life now. Let's say I say, mm -hmm. but I have to do that job because that provides finances too. So we can't. I kind of. Um, justify to myself the reasons why I have to stay in that relationship, stay in that house, stay in that uh, living arrangement, stay with that friend, stay in that job. Mm -hmm. And those are just um, almost like projectable illusions back onto my life that actually there is always a choice. There is always something else. Um, but I st I'm stuck in that belief system. It's almost like I justify to myself living a certain way or living with pain because I, I feel like I need it, because of the finan financial or, or whatever reasons. Um, 
And as a matter of fact, I could do another job which is completely different and which could bring the same finances in. But yes, I, I get stuck, yet I get stuck in this one. Um, I don't know if you've sort of come across Yeah, them. no, that I totally uh, relate. And of course, the Miracles talks about, you know, all the false gods that we have there that we think our security is ba based on. You know, so uh, absolutely, you know, like, oh, you know, when, when you're at certain levels of consciousness, you, you'll have associated with that level of consciousness certain things which are projected outwards as the source of survival and love that are projected into the world. So you'll have, a, you know, like your career will, might be projected with security, money, or safety, or, or friendship, and or your, your home, or, or your romantic partner. So all of these things get very highly, you know, they, they become strong attachments at each level that, that underpin these things. So, yeah, absolutely. So as you start to do spiritual work, you're loosening these attachments and you're letting go of the repressed feelings that underlie these attachments. Um, and, you know, like when I was working the stock market and got kidney failure, I thought I'd never work again. Mm -hmm. And I thought, you know, you'd have no money and, you know, there'd be no point in living. But... Uh, uh, so those kind of things come up, and uh, as you do your spiritual work, um, uh, I found actually nearly everything left eventually. But you know, sometimes slowly, sometimes quickly, because what happens is at a certain level of consciousness, when you're vibrating with so much fear and anxiety and low self-esteem, obviously everything you choose is based on that, mm -hmm. you know. So, you know, you have low self-esteem relationships, low self-esteem careers, low self-esteem. You eat in a low self-esteem way. Um, you talk to people and, 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 you, and you connect to people in your same vibration. You know, I was like very addictive and hyper and people in the stock market are addictive and hyper. So that's great. You know, birds of a feather stick together kind of thing. You know, if I find someone who was serene and peaceful and hardly talking, it would be like, you know, I'm on that frequency, like a nutcase, you know, so I wouldn't want to be with someone who's just like hardly talking and look, looking like they're quite What's peaceful. Wrong with you? <laughs> so it's like, you know, I would, I would just walk exactly. past them. So, you know, and I wouldn't want a career where you're just like sitting on a mat all day or something like that. So it just wouldn't suit that vibration. So as you, but actually as you go up, sometimes you go up quickly and sometimes slowly, like some people, some spiritual teachers have amazing spiritual experiences and they live in the park for a few years and totally leave everything. And some people go like up vibration by vibration, mm -hmm. step up. So you, can, you go up, you know, a little bit to a slightly better career, a more peaceful career or more peaceful relationships. And you gradually start to wean off the things which are no longer seem to fit with the, your way of life, you know, so things can be released in a more, more gradual way. But you'll find that as you do the spiritual work, um, you see, the, the, the feeling of unworthiness, the ego projects that unworthiness is fixed by an external solution. And whether this unworthiness is not fixed by an external solution. Unworthiness is fixed by letting go. And, and worthiness, in truth, comes from source. You see, the more you let go of stuff and the more the sunlight comes in from the soul, from the witnesser, then, you know, you have a feeling of worthiness. And that, of course, you know, like it's been said, you know, some, some people here have quoted The Course of Miracles, like my... You know, my security is based on my source. You, you know, it's not your career. It's not your partner. It's not, it's not the ec economy. So as you start to release, you get more and more connected to the source, i.e. letting go of your oppressed feelings and your thoughts. Also, automatically, because you're losing your sense of separation, you see, like a lot of things, you know, in a way that I was doing as an addict, was just to feel connected, to feel a part of the world. You know, I was eating do I was feeling bad, so I'd eat some donuts. And then for a short period of time, I'd feel comforted and mm. feel a part of the world. You know, like low self-esteem would be like, oh, if someone would tell me that they like me, then, oh, I need that external validation. And then I, I think I'll feel self-esteem. Or maybe my career is not good enough. If I could just get more money and more success, then I'd feel... You know, so the ego just projects a lot of stuff outwards, like... I need to probably, uh, you know, if I get a bit thinner, or if I, if I, if I get a, a new partner, or if I get a whatever it is. So, but actually self-esteem is, uh, is not fixed. I mean, it's temporarily fixed by those things. Why is it, I mean, that's the same way as addiction. You know, like if I'm feeling bad and I have some donuts, 
I will be, I will feel good for a short while, but that's not a real solution for feeling low self-esteem. Or, you know, so as you let go of the ego, it's like the cloud starts to evaporate and the light comes in and then, you know, and then the self-esteem or this feeling of not being connected in the world starts to dissolve. So we get this, we start to, and the Course talks about oneness. You know, as you start to let go of that feeling of fear and separation, the identification with thoughts and you release the repressed feelings, you get to this thing that the Course talks about oneness. It's like, you know, the, the ego, which was this belief or identification, which created this illusory idea of me being separate and then projecting that everything around me is in also in separation, it starts to dissolve and you start to experience yourself not as a cloud but as the sky. And this feeling of oneness and unity starts to experience. And then, of course, there is no low self-esteem, you know, that, that happens. Uh, so that's the way, um, and also the, the wonderful news is, you know, we talk about the Course of Miracles, also when you're in the source, you know, the, you know everything will be taken care of. You know, the universe will make sure you get your food, you, you get your shelter, all things will be synchronized at whatever level of consciousness you get to. So um, that's the thing for um, low self-esteem. So just letting go, letting go of stuff. As you go up, as, your self as you get more connected to the source, the negative thoughts get less, the feeling of separation goes. You start to lose, you know, you start to track your thoughts and your body less. So this feeling of oneness starts to become more and more prevalent. And of course, the low self-esteem, which is the blockage of the ego, uh, is removed. So really, um, low, low self-esteem requires, you know, like spiritual laxatives to let go of the ego. And then you start to feel, you know, you start to feel high self-esteem is really like you want spiritual consciousness to, to feel at one.